Hello, Monetization Nation. Historically, businesses would focus on purchasing advertising and reach, and then use that reach to tell people how awesome they were. That model doesn't work very well anymore. If I want to buy a new SUV, I'm not going to go to a Toyota salesperson and ask them what the best SUV is. Instead, I'm going to go to credible sources, such as review sites or safety rating sites, to pull in credible data to help me make a decision. One of the credible sources people go to now are influencers, credible experts in the field who have a wide audience and a lot of credibility. 49% of consumers depend on influencer recommendations. Today, Josh Albertson and I are going to talk about how to use influencer marketing and other strategies to increase our credibility. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. You used to work um, at Entrada. I did. And now you're at Cortex. Uh-huh. Um, tell me a little bit more about what you did at Entrada, what you do at Cortex. Yeah, uh, Entrada was my first job out of college at BYU. Uh, I started doing development project management for them, Um, was eventually promoted to lead that team. There were about 18 project managers at the height, Um, and they they each managed teams of developers in India, so I also got this great experience there to go over to India a couple times, work with those developers. Um, I um, did that for the first part of my career at Entrada, but then transitioned to a services leadership role, and so I oversaw Um, professional services, customer success, support, and training um, for about two years after I did the project management stuff. As we were growing, there was a lot of pain around supporting our customers and not leaving them hanging and making promises and delivering and creating processes. So that was really fun, exposed me to services. Um, But near the end of my tenure at Entrada, I you know, walked into the CEO's office and said, I've had a change of heart and I want to get into healthcare. And Um, I want to become a nursing home administrator. So I did that for two years in between this, that and Cortex. Um, Happy to go into all of that, but yeah, that's kind of the nutshell of my career. So give me the elevator pitch for Cortex of what you guys do. So give me uh, my chance to give you guys a little plug here. Well, appreciate it. No, we do follow-up phone calls to patients recovering at home. Um, and we do those for healthcare providers. So that could be a home health agency, skilled nursing facility, a doctor, hospital, uh, insurance plan, really anybody that wants to follow up with a patient at home and ask a series of questions. And we employ registered nurses to do it. So that's kind of our unique thing. Our registered nurses work from home. For them, it's kind of like Uber for nurses. So they love it. Um, nice. People sit on their couch and make phone calls. Okay. Uh, earlier in the conversation, you you were describing Cortex and you, you said it's kind of like Uber for nurses in home healthcare, right? I love that. That's one of the secrets of credibility. Kind of like is, is a great element of credibility because you take something that's credible that everybody knows is credible and knows how it works and you associate yourself with that with a small twist that's yours, right? So you can say like, Airbnb, if you're trying to describe Airbnb, you say this is, this is like Uber for homes, right? People have extra bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. So can you describe a little bit more what is your niche, right, that, that differentiates you, your unique selling proposition there? Yeah, the most unique is that our follow-up calls are made by registered nurses here in the United States by far. That in every demo and every piece of collateral we have out there is the reason why people ask to learn more. Um, We have niches that we think about internally in terms of the markets we're after, but in terms of, I think, what generically makes us more niche, it's definitely the registered nurses. Um, It used to be that businesses bought advertising and they bought reach and then businesses told people why they were awesome. And that used to work. But in today's generation, that doesn't work really well, right? You um, if you want to buy a new SUV, you're not going to go to a Toyota salesperson and ask them what the best SUV is. Mm-hmm. You're going to go to credible sources like review sites or scientific crash rating, you know, safety rating sites or whatever. And you're going to pull in credible data to help you make your decision. 
um, instead of trusting that salesperson of one specific company. Sure. Um, and, and so much of, of the business of marketing has, has switched. So that's what this book is about. It's talking about what are those credible sources and, and how do you leverage those credible sources to kind of transform your organization? Hmm. Uh, you know, you reminded me of a very specific positive credible story from Entrada that I okay. um, I think is relevant. I was just talking with my partner today about it, but uh, we, Entrada's sales early on were always growing, but fairly linear. And I don't know who had the idea. I don't remember, you know, I was a part of the executive team when they kind of made this decision, but they decided to go after some industry consultants in the multifamily space. So folks that uh, were highly regarded at trade shows. They were always on the panels at trade shows talking multifamily um, and did a consulting arrangement with each of them uh, that ultimately, and I don't have all the details on how that consulting arrangement worked out, but ultimately brought Entrada into so many more conversations that they never would have been in simply because those people had the network and the credibility and Entrada piggybacked on that. And uh, our growth went from linear to exponential uh, purely because of that change. Yeah, so one of the secrets that we have is it's influencer marketing, and it sounds like that's what they did. They found the people that had influence in the space, they went and positively associated themselves with those people and leveraged that to kind of the, the credibility of those influencers flowed through then to Entrada. Yes. Going back through the list, let me, I'm gonna kind of go through some of these secrets here and, and maybe it'll spark your, your thoughts of, of one you've seen, so. Yeah, yeah. One of the concepts is love. You know, basically people don't care what we say until they know that we care. And so as we demonstrate love, and you gave an example earlier where, where you, the Ensign Group had that, that fund for employees, right? It's there and when people are in that hardest time of their life, the company's gonna be there for them, right? Uh, can you think of any other examples of, of businesses or that have shown practices of love or caring or kindness. Yeah, are you, um, or have you already interviewed Johnny Hanna with Helmy? No, I haven't, but I, and I don't know him, so I would love the introduction. Yeah, I'm happy to introduce you, and he'd probably be happy to talk. He's become more prolific on LinkedIn lately as uh, an influencer, so he's CEO of Helmy. He was the head of sales at Entrada, so that story I was talking about likely was his idea, and if okay. it was, it was definitely he who put it into place, but Johnny's a great guy. I respect him tremendously as a mentor. I reported to him for half the time I was there. So CEO of Homey, um, when I, like when, when you asked, can you think about leaders of love? He just popped into my mind initially, but a concrete example is um, he right now is posting mental health Mondays, being very vulnerable on LinkedIn about mental health issues he's struggled with or that he's helped people with and inviting people to be more vulnerable and open about it. And initially it had like some traction, but now those posts on LinkedIn are just massive, massive followings. And in the comments, if you end up reading them repeatedly, people will say, Johnny, when you pulled me aside or when you sat in my car and talked to me for an hour about this topic, it really resonated. I've been seeing a therapist or working on my mental health or whatever people are doing to address, you know, that issue that he's talking about. But so that, uh, it, you know, it's loving that he meets with people individually and then that he's vulnerable kind of publicly when he's such a public figure um, at a, I think, successful company. So that's an example of love and probably a bunch of other things that comes to mind right now. Yeah, vulnerability is, is huge as well. Like one of the secrets is, is being, it's the secret of imperfection, right? And when we try to be perfect, we're not real. And by showing the scars that we really have, it, it actually gives us credibility. It, it allows people to connect with us in a way that, People just don't connect with people that seem to be perfect, right? That's or right. companies that seem to be perfect. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Another one is listening first. That before we try to talk, that you know we're a lot smarter. We do a whole bunch of listening first. Any any thoughts about about that? Have you seen? seen I anything? absolutely believe in that principle, um, and I'm a talker, so uh, I this is one that I have to consciously and kind of constantly practice. But um, in terms of examples, um, honestly, my father is probably the most relevant example that comes to mind. Uh, I called him today 
asking for advice, in other words, wanting him to talk to me, I ended up talking for, I would say, 95% of it. So he's a great example of that. When I was growing up, he was CEO of a motorhome company called National RV in uh, California. And I remember asking him, I was like, Dad, how do you lead all these people that you're with? And how does this work? I think I was in high school at the time. And he said, I just stay quiet and listen a lot. And people, yeah. one, people assume I'm smart. But two, I just surround myself with smarter people. You know, all these things that we hear people say, but I think it's pretty hard to put those into practice. But he's one that embodies that for sure. So who is the person that has the most credibility for you in your life? It is probably my dad. Um, and then if you go outside of family, it's um, honestly, actually, John Hanna's probably second as I think about people that I know. So you, I've kind of introduced the two people that are probably the most okay. credible. <laughs> so why are those two people the most credible to you? They never, ever don't do what they say they're going to do. You know, they always follow through. They're vulnerable. They're kind. Uh, they, uh, in both cases, have had a lot of success, and yet it hasn't gone to their heads. Um, you wouldn't know it, like, if you ran into them on the street. Um, they, when you get into a deep conversation with them, they're intelligent about principles. Like, they're, they're very well-versed in either business or life principles, and so they, they don't rely on I guess, opinion. Um, they rely on principles that they've seen proven. They, you talk to either of them that I'd be shocked if you talk to either of them, the word true principle didn't come out with both of them, at least a couple of times right. in conversation. So those are things that come to mind about them. Okay. That sounds great. So I ran adoption.com for a lot of years and um, the longest client that I ever had with me was with me 10 or 11 years, you know, advertised with me every single month for 10 or 11 years. And he was in a month to month contract. I never put him in a long term contract. And the cool part about that is it forced me to make him happy every month, right? If, if something was wrong, I had to fix it then. The problem is we get in these long term contracts and we think it's good for business, but but we get comfortable in the long term contracts and people, our customers get to a spot where they're not happy. And then we force them to stay in a long, long term contract. And then what happens from that is, it, it, it doesn't force us to do what it takes to keep them happy long term. And then as soon as that contract is over, the first day they have the ability to, they cancel and they will never work for us again. And long term contracts are the, how do you say, the enemy of successful long term business relationships. And antithetical to SaaS. So especially if you're in a SaaS business, the software as a service, um, we and mostly sign month to month contracts for that very same principle, but totally agree. Yeah. Thank you so much, Josh, for sharing your stories and knowledge with us today. Here's some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, we can connect and build positive relationships with influencers to connect with their credibility and network. Number two, to establish credibility when we're describing our business, we can use the kind of like strategy to connect customers with something familiar and credible and put our own unique angle on it. Number three, when we're vulnerable with our customers, we can connect on a higher level and establish credibility with them. Number four, listening to others is a great strategy for credibility because it shows them we care about what they have to say. Number five, just like Johnny Hanna and Josh's dad, if we're committed, vulnerable, humble, and hold strong to our principles, our credibility will probably grow. Number six, consider using month-to-month -month contracts to encourage us to keep our clients happy. We may be able to keep our customers for a longer period of time this way. If you enjoyed this interview and want to connect with Josh or his company, you can find him on LinkedIn or email him at josh at cortexhc.com. Uh, we'll include links to both of those in the blog post for this episode. Did you like today's episode? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, you can get a free monetization assessment of your business or subscribe to the free monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel or podcast. And number three, you can follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. What strategies have you used to boost your credibility? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining us for this episode. I wish you success in your monetization efforts. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? 
To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.